What's going on guys, Gomers here, and we're back on another one. MLB The Show 22 has now been released, at least on early access, for over a week. Let me know in the comments section your feelings, your thoughts, what do you enjoy, what do you not enjoy. Give a rating, 1 out of 10. But we, speaking of the number 10, have 10 brand new tips to give you guys for experienced you know, the DD Titans that have been playing since MLB 12, and also the people that just picked it up on Game Pass, or maybe they're on Switch. This is your first year. So all-encompassing, this is going to help out both the novice and the experienced player. Leave a like if you guys enjoy, subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. We're going to hit 70,000 today. Thank you guys so much for that. Let's do it. And let's get into it. First off, pertaining to making stubs, a new feature this year that... First off, pertaining making First off, pertaining making stubs, a new feature that SGS uh, bestowed upon us on opening day, a gift from the heavens above. We have the supercharged cards, which is a essentially steroided version of the inside edge. You know, somebody has a really good game and he gets a really good card. So you look at someone like a Tyler O'Neill, 24 hours, just about seven left. He's going to be significantly boosted on his live series card. Now, when it comes to making stubs, there's a pretty direct way of doing this. Now, if you already watch baseball, it's perfect for you. It's practically made for you to go ahead and take advantage of the marketplace because you can just simply watch some of these games and see somebody hit a home run and their price starts to surge. So another tip inside a tip here is that you're almost... Is that being lazy and not cleaning out your binder selling the duplicates that you have is almost to your benefit because yesterday we saw somebody like Anthony Rizzo hit a big home run and his price jumped up. Let's see if we can reflect it on the marketplace. No, because it was quite so sudden, but he was going for about three, four thousand when his actual price is about 700. So if you watch the games, have a fair stub bank, you can really take advantage of that. Now on stream, specifically twitch.tv slash Legend, the link is also in the description if you are, you know, by any means curious, is that your ball player, which has been a key point to many people's squads early part of the year, how exactly do you see their attributes? Because it looks like a pretty shitty card, a 65 overall. That doesn't look too good. Well, you can see your actual overall, and you can test your archetype, you can test your loadout that and see what the true attributes are very simply this has been around forever most of you guys might be aware of it but i get the question constantly on stream so i figured let's just put it here so it is uh, a lot easier for you guys to figure out you just simply go into something like a play versus computer game go over and you can see the wheel for your players so there i get a good gauge on what my players truly looking like there's no advanced arithmetic mathematics that you have to do it's quite simply on the screen right there so very simple and easy to mix and match your loadout opening day is hit we've already had some pretty cool moments a big walk off by seth beer uh flirt with the no-no from sean Nadia, who should have been a twin he, sh he should have been a twin but anyway you can also hit on underdog fantasy right now you can use my code gomes for a 100 dollars deposit match guarantee you deposit ten dollars you get an additional 10 to go ahead and make some pickums live now for the mlb season we've been doing this on stream having a lot of fun getting upset when joey gallo doesn't get the one hit that he needs to cash in my slip uh so that's my advice for you just you know don't have joey gallo in your slip right there and you should be golden but i think it's a great opportunity i know a lot of people on my stream have already signed up they're having a good time and so am i we're going to run some tournaments within the community as well that i'm very excited for so again use code gomes and get a deposit match guarantee of up to 100 dollars thank you get to underdog for partnering up with me for this mlb season again touching back on stream layer another question i'll get asked often is what attributes truly matter and that's something i feel is not that clear right contact and power you shouldn't exactly have to be an albert einstein to imagine that those play a pretty fucking significant role right you're probably gonna want those two to be rather high but some of these stats don't really matter you look at vision discipline clutch everything to the right of power versus lefties essentially vision 
plays a pretty small role. The Vision, I consider it the bailout attribute. You see Trout's at 61 right here. It's reflective of a player's strikeout numbers, but in the past, that correlated to your PCI size. In the last two years, it's your contact number that actually determines the largeness or the smallness, the microness. Sorry, might be touching a little bit too close to home right there, but Vision doesn't matter too much. It helps if your PCI is not on the ball, but a guy like Mike Trout, he has high contact. I really don't look at the vision. The discipline is for check swings, essentially. Again, if you have high discipline, it means that player walks a lot, which of course Trout does, but in the game, it doesn't really do anything for you. I think check swings are very random. I've never noticed a true difference of a guy with 125 like Trout and a guy with 50 who doesn't walk like Javi Baez. It's essentially the same. Clutch doesn't matter a ton. When runners are in scoring position, your PCI will be bigger. Bunting, it's going to determine how good you are at bunting, of course. Durability does not matter whatsoever. Arm accuracy isn't that important. I'll look at a guy like Javi Baez, who has truly poor 40 arm accuracy. It's like pissing with morning wood. Not great. It doesn't matter that much because you should be using the fielding throw meter, which as long as you get it anywhere in the green, it's going to be on target. Yes, the perfect throw ni Yes, the perfect throw notch is a little smaller. It's a little bit more difficult to hit, but you should not really pay mind to that attribute. Furthermore, base running aggressiveness matters nothing. That's just a complete simulation stat. The stealing attribute is so important. Brian Reynolds. I would not run with him. 15 stealing is horrendous. The problem with that is if you try and steal, you figure he has 85 speed. Maybe he'll be able to beat it out. No, they get such a poor jump. That's what the steal attribute correlates to. It is not worth it. You would be better off with a guy with 75 or 70 speed and like 60 stealing opposed to 85. So he can run fast, but he cannot steal. That's very important to note. For catchers, I do want to mention, I don't think fielding matters at all. The only two attributes I consider for catchers, arm strength to throw at base runners and then blocking. Reaction doesn't really matter. You don't have like outfield scenarios where you would have to react to a ball quickly. It doesn't really feel animation based. I only look at that arm strength and that block rate. Then looking at pitches quickly, hit per nine is very important. Probably the end all be all. K per nine matters slightly. It helps with missing bats, but hits per nine is going to decrease your PCI size of your opponent. Home runs per nine doesn't matter whatsoever. Pitch and clutch again counteracts with that batter's clutch. You know, whoever's higher kind of wins the race and the PCI is going to be very minimally affected. So you really want to look at the pitch mix, the hit per nine, and consider the K per nine at BB9. But as we'll talk about in this next tip, there's a little bit more to it than just the BB9. I stumbled upon the Mick Abel card, who's a perfect example of it right here. You'll look at this. He has 64 walk or BB9, right? Which isn't great. That's below average, I would consider. But if you press R3 and look at his control, it's rather good. 89, 84, and 87 on his first three pitches. 74 on that circle changeup, which is pretty damn good. That's solid. And then the 12-6 curveball, it's 59. You might as well, you know, duck for cover, do your best Andrew Heaney impression, and look towards the stars. Or you could just throw it down to the strike zone and hopefully they chase it in the dirt. That's what I do. So it's very imperative that you do look at that control. That you do look at the control section because it tells so much more story than just that all-encompassing BB9 statistic. Chase packs are brand new in the game and they feature such cards as Albert Pujols and Julio Rodriguez. Now, it's a lot of people thinking that the only way to get this is by spending 75,000 stubs. That's not the case. You could simply open a standard pack. Wouldn't it be wild if we get it right here? And you could stumble upon a chase pack. It's that simple. You do not have to buy a 50 bundle in order to get that. It's a guaranteed topper, but you could theoretically get it about out of any standard pack. XP, there's many glitches. XP, there's many exploits in the game right now. We've been fortunate enough to, you know, finish out the program. So we've got all 600,000 XP. I promise you, I have seen grass within the last week. But with that, there is a XP cap that you can earn. But with that, there is an XP cap 
on each day where I believe it's 60,000 in game XP that you can earn. I got this little notice right here basically telling me, you know, go outside, damn it. And uh, I had to stop for the day. I couldn't earn any more in game until the following day. So you will actually get a notice as you saw right there. I was just playing Road to the Show and I got told, nope. You're not going to earn any more XP. You can still play, but you will not earn progress. You can still get mission XP, so I could do this daily moment and get 1,000, but I wouldn't earn anything on top of that. If I were to go play a ranked seasons game, I'd have to wait until the timer expires. A brand new mode this year, co-op. I was playing some with my buddy Day last night on his stream. I'm going to show you a clip right here because there's been a pretty prevalent issue within that game mode where... Uh, it freezes if you so much as don't bring in a reliever the right way. What you have to do is you have to schedule in the inning prior to to bring in a pitcher. So if you are the home team in the bottom of the inning, you have to schedule Mariano Rivera to come in and then confirm that you still want him to come in or else it'll freeze. Very very ridiculous i'm sure it's gonna get fixed at some point but if you're interested in co-op i recommend that however stick with 2v2 right now 3v3 is horrible but i think that's an important thing to note couple new things with the ball player this year the showdown quirks are actually in the game which is kind of interesting you'll see something like pulse pounder significantly increasing the pitch velocity which does not affect your attributes it's a perk like it is in Showdown. If you played that before, there's really good ones such as the clear for takeoff, which increases exit velocity on every normal swing. That one, of course, goes for a decent amount more, uh, about 2,000 for the diamond version. I don't know exactly how well these do perform. I do want to play test it a bit. I think we're going to do that in the next few days here, and I'll let you know what happens. But it does not affect attributes, but it does do something. So it's the same effect. It'll increase your PCI in certain cases for the defibrillator, significant contact boost, and in this case, higher exit velocity on normal swings. Speaking of quirks, let's talk about this here. Some of you may be familiar, but I feel a large portion don't really give these enough credit truly in how much they determine the success of a certain player. Vladimir Guerrero Jr., a live series card, has so many different gameplay affecting quirks. Homebody, night player, first pitch hitter, dead red, breaking ball hitter, rally monkey, and fighter. All seven of these are going to impact your gameplay. They're usually going to affect your PCI size again. First pitch hitter, you're going to have an increased PCI size on the first pitch of that bat. He's better at hitting breaking balls and fastballs. So what the hell do you throw to him? And it's pretty interesting to consider a quirk like homebody or night player. Because let's look at a guy like Mike Trout over here. He also has the same thing. So maybe think about that when it comes to choosing your stadium and choosing what time of day because that will give them a bit of an edge. So make sure and check out your live series cards and see how they stack up. Stamina has been reworked this year for better or worse. It is going to take longer for your pitchers to regenerate that stamina. What I would suggest to you is think long and hard about taking out some of these starters, but more specifically, bringing them out of the pen. I think they did this to deter you from bringing in an Alec Manoa or bringing in a Mike Mussina who might have a little bit of stamina, not enough to start the game, but enough to pitch an inning at the end there and might be better than some of your relief pitch options or if you just need a long reliever. It's something to consider now because it'll take at least like an extra game, at least from my experience, to get them back up to a starter level stamina where I feel confident enough in picking them to open up the game. So keep that in mind. The same thing goes for relievers. And I know in Battle Royale, it's gotten to the point where like five, six pitches, you are in the yellow, you are in red stamina. So you're really going to have to start thinking more about who to choose and when.
And finally, uh, do a little fun one. We've already reached over 10 anyway. Free packs. Everybody likes free shit, don't they? Uh, there's a lot of stuff just waiting for you. You just have to go and redeem it, such as uniforms. You're going to earn a lot of these throughout the Face of the Franchise program. You get five of them. You get a show pack. You get 10 of them. You get five of the show packs. So just go ahead and redeem these. You're going to notice a pretty large portion of them. The same thing goes with these perks. You know, collect five of these, a lot of them bronze that you can't sell anyway you're gonna get yourself a free pack right there and we did have a couple videos on the channel specifically talking about how to get unlimited free packs so i encourage you to go watch that video as well but that's gonna do it 10 very helpful tips for some new and experienced players in mlb the show 22 i'm enjoying the game i wish it would work a little better i wish there weren't so many bugs and freezes weren't as prevalent but you know maybe one day it'll be fixed but let me know what you guys think. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. And thank you for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. Big thumbs out. Yeet.